We live on an extraordinary planet that provides us with air, water, food, beauty, and inspiration. Studying the Earth's ecosystems and how human beings have reduced biodiversity and damaged the planet's climate by degrading forest lands is of urgent importance. Degraded lands can be found throughout the world but often have been perceived only in a local context. There was a, 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 a very big range of uh, forest farmlands, but the farmers have almost consumed all of them. Evidence shows that degradation causes biodiversity loss, desertification, food insecurity, and climate change. These are both local and global challenges. In 1995, the cradle of Chinese civilization in the Lus Plateau was virtually devoid of vegetation, disrupting microclimates and causing erosion, flooding, drought, poverty, and famine. But the Chinese story doesn't end there and offers a glimpse of what is possible. Other countries like Rwanda are embracing restoration as the central pillar of their development. We had to take a careful look at what had actually been happening that damaged uh, this uh, system and therefore had to reverse that again with the human action. Rwanda is pursuing a model for development that is not only helping restore ecosystems over broad areas, but also propelling sustainable economic growth which largely depends on the services offered by ecosystems. Not content to only restore small areas, the country has launched the Rwanda Forest Landscape Restoration Initiative with the aim to restore all degraded land in the country. Some places are blessed with the ability to generate biomass in huge amounts. The Chiapas region of Mexico is one such place. But undervaluing ecosystem function has degraded large amounts of land. To correct this, the Mexican government has put in place programs that create incentives to conserve by directly investing in measures to restore lands that have been degraded. To further reduce deforestation, the government and the people are seeking ways to create sustainable livelihoods, such as ecotourism that provide more income than agriculture while leaving the natural system intact. What is very, very important is to have the, the policies of development in, in the same line of action as the policies of environmental protection. And you can see them. The experience in Ghana is showing that agroforestry practices can maintain or improve ecosystem functioning, which in turn enhances their productivity. I decided to plant uh, uh, the, 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 the timber species along with the cuckoo so that I get the uh, the, the, the timber, and at the same time, I get the cocoa pots. It isn't simply in developing countries where restoration is possible. This beautiful forest in Scotland was planted over 250 years ago and has helped increase Scottish forest cover from 2% to 17%. Restoring and managing forest resources creates cultural, economic, and ecological benefits for the local community and the global ecosystem. And they are the best methods we have 
to protect biodiversity and to mitigate and adapt to human impacts on the climate. As the momentum for restoration around the world starts to gather pace, how much of the world's degraded landscapes could be restored in the coming years? And what impact would it have? More than two billion hectares of lost or degraded forest provide huge opportunities for restoration. If even a fraction of these forests were restored, the annual economic gain would be enormous. And then there's the massive contribution such restoration would provide toward mitigating against the effects of global climate change, which begin as soon as the restoration action is taken. What's needed is greater shared commitment to do this. As the examples in this film and many others show, this is a very achievable goal. And everyone has a role to play in building a sustainable future.